Hey guys, Ryan here, and this is the new Garmin 165 Music that I've been using and testing for more than a week now. And I gotta tell you, I've never been this excited about a budget watch as much as this one, and you'll find out why in this video. But there's something about it that might be a deal breaker. I guess the most important thing you need to know about this watch is that, unfortunately, it only comes in one size, 43 millimeters. Honestly, this alone can be the reason you might avoid buying this watch if your wrist circumference isn't that big. And I must say, as soon as I put it on, I felt like I can't stand this size. Fast forward to a couple days later, I've become such a fan of this watch. Its smaller size makes it such a practical watch that you can watch on pretty much any occasion. And since it's very lightweight, it's also very comfortable to wear around the clock, including at night. So that's about the size and comfort. A 43 millimeter watch and a 1.2 inch display. The body and the back of the case are made of plastic, but don't worry about that. We've been recently seeing Garmin using more and more plastic, even on their more expensive watches. I guess the real difference here is that the screen is not made of Gorilla Glass. It's just some kind of reinforced glass. So as you can see, it's probably not the most durable watch, at least not on paper. But again, this is a budget watch and there has to be some kind of compromise here. So it all depends on you and the kind of activities that you do. For me, it would probably work, but not ideal. But there are plenty of good things about this watch that I could easily convince myself that yes, despite not having the premium look and feel, I can buy and enjoy this watch as my number one. So this is the music version, and it means that you can download music to your watch and listen offline. But unlike a watch like a Venue 3 or Venue 2 Plus, it doesn't have a microphone on speaker. So you can't listen on the watch itself. Although that's not the purpose of a microphone and speaker on those other watches. The main purpose is to make and receive calls. So except this feature, the rest of the smartwatch features are pretty much the same as any other Garmin watches. And in fact, the reason I've been so excited about this watch and I've really enjoyed using it is because at least software wise, Garmin has been constantly lowering the threshold or I should say premium feature threshold on their cheaper watches. And I mean cheaper compared to a $1,000 Garmin watch. I was worried about the buttons and their quality because of my experience with the Venue 3, but to my surprise, they feel really good. In terms of their clickiness, I'd give them seven out of 10, which is great for this watch. So when it comes to watch faces, there's a healthy number of them available. And what immediately struck me was how vibrant looking they were. Most of them aren't boring and they have nice gradient colors you'd expect from a modern watch face. The user experience is pretty much the same across all the Garmin watches. And I mean, even though this is a budget watch, it still feels quite snappy. We have what's called the glance view that can be accessed from a swipe up or down or pressing the up or down buttons. And it's a customizable view that you can use to see all your important info or stats. Then there's the controls to quickly get access to certain actions like Garmin Pay or Do Not Disturb mode and so on. And finally, there's the activities and apps view to start certain activities or apps. So these three, the glance view, the controls and the activities are the building blocks of all the views you're gonna see on this watch. If you like this video, let me know and subscribe to see more. In terms of activity tracking, there's plenty of common sports profiles for you to track. That could be anything like running, yoga, pool swimming, open water swimming, biking, tennis, etc. I've tried running, outdoor walking, a treadmill run, and strength training. All the activities include different types of data fields for you to see during your activity. So you can have a few of these data field screens that you can swipe through, and each of these screens themselves can have up to four data fields that you can customize as well. Not only that, you can use third-party data fields that have even more fields uh, which you can download from the Garmin Connect IQ store. And that's something that used to be only available on the phone as an app, but nowadays you have directly access to it from your watch. And in addition to data fields, you can also install other third-party or Garmin watch faces, widgets and apps from here. Now this watch obviously has a touch AMOLED screen, but unlike some other smartwatches, you're not forced to use the touch fun function only. Pretty much everything you can think of can be done by using the buttons as well. Although you can't say the same thing the other way around. 
But at least when it comes to activity tracking, by default, the touch screen is off, which you can easily turn on. And you might say, why would I ever not want to have the touch screen feature enabled during activities? Well, that's mostly because you don't want to trigger a touch inadvertently. For example, if it's raining and you're running, you definitely want to make sure the touch feature is disabled as water itself can trigger the touch. But for example, if you do swimming, it wouldn't make sense to have even the touch feature, right? So it's off and there's no way to turn it on. Now, a favorite feature of mine on this watch is the audio prompts feature. So obviously, unlike the Venue 3 or Venue 2 Plus, the 165 doesn't have a speaker, but there's still this very handy audio prompts feature that will announce certain statuses and for certain activities, for example, running. But you'd have to use your Bluetooth headphones to hear these announcements. And you can be either connected to your watch directly or to your phone doesn't matter. And the types of announcements include lap alert, pace alert, heart rate alert, and so on. For example, you can customize it to announce your heart rate every minute. Now, in addition to these audio prompts, you can have different alerts during your activities. For example, it could be pace or distance or calories burned or heart rate alert. Lots of different things that you can set up here. You can even have alerts during your swimming activities but with less options available. So you only have time, distance, and calories, whereas if you do open water swimming, you'd get an additional stroke rate alert. In terms of smartwatch capabilities, the 165 shows you the notifications from apps, calls, and text messages. And if that notification includes a picture, it shows that too. For example, if you subscribe and turn on the notifications on Ryan's Tech, when there's a new video, you get notified of it, and you'll see a very low resolution thumbnail of the video as well. You can also reply both to incoming calls and text messages on your watch by using either the predefined quick replies or by creating your own ones. And this is great that you can create your own messages. Not all watches allow you this. But of course, one limitation here is that you can't initiate a new text message on the watch and it's only useful for replying back uh, with those quick replies. One little handy feature of the Forerunner 165 is the recovery time. It's simple. You exercise, the watch shows you how long it takes your body to fully recover. And this is interesting because it's not just an arbitrary number that the watch throws at you or even just based on the intensity of your workout, but it also takes into account your sleep quality, other activities, and your overall stress levels. Lovely feature. A great reason you might want to consider buying this watch is the overnight HRV tracking feature. HRV or heart rate variability is the amount of time between each heartbeat that changes all the time based on your physiological conditions. So while the recovery time is a great feature for gauging your readiness status for your next workout, keeping track of your HRV status provides you a more precise picture about your body and how you've handled stress. If it's in balance, you're good. If it's out of balance, you'd be better off resting or doing some easy active recovery that day. All right, so Garmin's latest HR sensor is Elevate version 5, but this watch is shipped with version 4. Now, I don't have a problem with that, and based on my previous experience, that older version can also be quite accurate. But when it comes to this watch, I'm a bit disappointed with its accuracy. In fact, I would say that's my biggest complaint about this watch. So if you've been following my smartwatch reviews, you might know that I typically do three kinds of HR accuracy tests. One of them is a sprint test, the other is HR max, and finally a long-term HR stability test. At least when it comes to my sprint test that I designed to test the reactivity of the sensor, I didn't like the results since the heart rate fluctuations were significant against my heart rate chest strap, which shows me as close to the actual heart rate values. I'm also gonna be doing a semi-live real-time HR test on a treadmill soon for that other kind of test that I do. So stay tuned for this upcoming event and I invite you to join my Patreon supporters so I can make more of these videos. You can find the link in the description. There are of course other kinds of sports specific tests that one can do to test the HR sensor accuracy. For example, I did strength training with this watch. And to be honest, when it comes to strength training, I don't have any high expectations from any watches usually because there's a lot of wrist movements when you're working out. And here's the result. As you can see, there are big gaps and drops that are due to the nature of this activity. 
Like I said, this is the 165 music, which means you can download music to your watch and listen offline. So there are three ways you can use the music controls on this watch. First is to download your own music files to your watch, or you can use your music service like Spotify to download music, but you're gonna need to have a subscription of the music service that you're using. And there's almost four gigabytes, gigabytes of storage for you to download your songs. Either way, you need to connect your Bluetooth headphones to this watch to listen to music. And lastly, you can just use the playback controls on the watch to control the music uh, that you're playing on the phone. You can use the 165 to track all stages of your sleep, deep, light, REM, and the time spent awake in between. Also, just like the Venue 3, now you can track your naps either automatically or manually, which I haven't tested myself. But unlike the Venue 3, it doesn't have the sleep coach feature. And to be honest, it's not that big a deal because it's not that different from the info you already have access to both on your watch and on the app about your sleep. And the Garmin app, especially the new one, is one of the good ones out there. For example, you'll get to see great looking charts, whether it's HR, cadence, or pace. And many times you can see one of these charts as an overlay on top of another one, and you can zoom in and out on charts that you don't necessarily see on other apps of other smartwatches. It's also very customizable. You can log different things about your activity, you tracked, or your sleep. I've made a video about the app that you can watch, and there's another upcoming one, so stay tuned. Now let's talk about the battery life. Garmin says you can get up to 11 days of battery life from this watch. Here's my take. If you wear the watch and don't do anything, there's a chance you might get there. But otherwise, no way. Usually, whatever number they say, I subtract a couple numbers before even trying it out myself. And in my case, I was able to get almost eight days. But you have to know that I've done multiple activities and I've been fiddling around with this watch, especially during the first few days. But I'd say after three to four days, I kind of put it aside and didn't use it that much. So combine is still not that much and it makes my consumption kind of moderate usage. But of course, I always say that battery life really depends on your usage pattern at the end. For example, this watch has an SPO2 monitoring feature that you can use either on demand or during sleep. And if you enable that, you should expect a day, a day and a half less battery life. So I'd say in general, expect seven to nine days of battery life, which includes a few short GPS enabled activities in between and with the SPO2 monitoring, maybe a day less. I'd say the 165 is like a distilled version of the 965 or even 265, and you can watch its review here, but if you can live with its support HR tracking and lack of dual band GPS, I'd say for a budget watch, it's still giving you a very good value for money package.